Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam wa rasulullah. We continue reading from Imam al-Azali's The 99 Beautiful Names of God, Al-Muqsad al-Asna, fi Sharh Asma Allah al-Husna, translated by David Burel and Nazir Tahir. We are on page 38, the beginning of the second paragraph, and uh, before that, we have uh, immediately read uh, Imam Razel's discussion um, about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being the necessary existent, al wajib al wujud, and that everything in the universe uh, exists, um, that exists, and that possibly uh, could exist, comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, saying that the uh, he is the necessary existent, it means that there is no need for uh, a cause. In fact, there shouldn't be uh, a cause. This is why uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is the necessary uh, existent. And then Imam Razali at one point says that. Uh, what we are talking about, we talk about negations, and that's not about his essence. So either by negation or affirmation, but it's still not uh, about his essence. Now we continue reading, and these could of course be expressed in names and attributes or relations. If you say Here's the beginning of the second paragraph on page 38. What is the way to knowing him? I would say, where a small boy or an impotent person, that's the Arabic, where a boy or an impotent person to say to us, what is the way to know the pleasure of sexual intercourse? And to perceive its essential reality, we would say there are two ways here. One of them is for us to describe it to you, so that you know it, so that you can know it. The other is to wait patiently until you experience the natural instinct of passion in yourself, and then for you to engage in intercourse so that you experience the pleasure of intercourse yourself, and so to come to know it. This second way is the authentic way leading to the reality of knowledge. The first way leads only to an imagining and to comparing it with something which is not like it. Since the most we can do is represent the pleasure of intercourse by something whose pleasure, whose pleasures an impotent person can uh, can experience like the pleasure of food and refreshing drink. كفهم العنين لذة الجمع بيوصف له من لذة السكر or لذة السكر Something is uh, it's the understanding of the impotent that's why I stopped okay this I'm um, trying to explain the problem with the translation if there's a problem so here it says uh, the first way leads only to an imagining and to comparing it with something which is not like it since the most we can do is represent the pleasure of intercourse by something whose pleasure an impotent person can experience. Here simply it says like like the pleasure of food and refreshing drink. Mm. Again. So we'd say to him, do you not know that sweets are delicious? For when you take some, you reach a pleasant state and feel delight in your soul. He would say certainly, and then we would say sexual intercourse is like that as well. 
Do you think that this brings him to understand the real pleasure of intercourse as it is, to the point of occupying in his knowledge the place occupied in one who has tasted the pleasure and experienced it? Hardly. In fact, the most that this description could be would be an imagining and a misleading comparison, an illustration sharing nothing but the name. So far as the imagining is concerned, he would imagine that in course, intercourse was something pleasant in a general way. As for the comparison, it amounts to likening intercourse to the sweetness of sugar. And this is misleading since there is no correspondence whatever between the sweetness of sugar and the pleasure of intercourse. And as far as sharing in the name is concerned, he knows that it deserves to be called pleasure. Yet when the passion arises and he experiences it, he will know that the sweetness of sugar is not like it at all. And what he had imagined of it was not at all what he imagined. Indeed, he will know that whatever he had heard about its name and attributes, that it was pleasurable and good, was true, but far more true of the passion of intercourse than of the sweetness of sugar. So the problem was probably uh, is this. Since the most we can do is to, rep to is pre represent the pleasure of intercourse by something whose pleasure an impotent person can experience, it might mislead, of course, uh, it's not something that uh, he can uh, experience, except that uh, it's really referring to the uh, next phrase, like the pleasure of food and refreshing drink. Uh, since the most we can do is represent is uh, likening okay uh, food and drink testing testing the sweetness of sugar to intercourse so it has to be an immediate reference there probably that would uh, uh, take away the ambiguity. That will end up with two ways. The two ways, Sabilan, there are two ways of knowing God. May he be praised and exalted. One of them inadequate and the other closed. The inadequate, Qasr, the adequate way consists on mentioning names and attributes by, and proceeding to compare them with what we know from ourselves. For when we know ourselves to be powerful, knowing, living, speaking, and then hear those terms attributed to, to God, great and glorious, or when we come to know them by demonstration, in either case we understand them with an end with an inadequate comprehension, much as the impotent person understood the pleasure of intercourse from what was described for him of the pleasure of sweets. Indeed, our life, power, and understanding are further from the life, power, and understanding of God. Uh, I think the, there's a serious problem in translating وَعِلْمُهُ عِلْمُ اللَّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى to translate that as understanding is problematic. Except that here he says, indeed our life power and understanding are further from the life power understanding of God. Then sugar sweetness is from the pleasure of intercourse. It's our understanding. In fact, there is no correspondence between them. The outcome of defining God, great and glorious by these attributes, then, is but establishing imaginings and likeness. 
but establishing imaginings and likenesses and the sharing in the name but the process of comparison is cut short when it is said not is as his likeness for he is living but not like living things powerful but not like powerful persons there is something missing in the Arabic for example about the taste of uh, sweet food so with the reference to the uh, impotent person much as the impotent person understood the pleasure of intercourse from what was described for him of the pleasure of sweets there are some details in Arabic that uh, are not there at all in the English here is the Arabic إذ غايته أن نفس اللذة الوقاء عنده بشيء من اللذات التي تدركها العينين كلذة الطعام الحلو مثلا so that like the sweet food for example so we we say to him فنقول لهم أما أن تعرف أن السكر لذيذ أما تعرف Anasukali, don't you know that sugar is delicious? For this is the uh, the whole sentence is uh, is not there in the English translation. For you to find a man to enjoy a good and delicious and to feel in yourself a rich. So when you uh, consume, when you eat uh, the uh, sugar you'll uh, feel good and you'll feel inside yourself uh, I think the best way to um, translate right here is aroma okay and it's not there in, in, uh, in the English translation it simply talks about the pleasure of sweets and skips the rest of the, uh, the the whole sentence there somehow um, it's even a little bit more than um, so I think more is, has disappeared from the uh, text okay in fact there is no correspondence between them between um, sugar sweetness and the pleasure of intercourse the outcome of defining god creating glorious by these attributes then is but establishing imaginings and likenesses and the sharing in the name but the process of comparison is cut short when it is said no is as his likeness for he is living but not like living things powerful but not like powerful persons ليس كمثل شيء هو حي لا كالأحياء وقادر لا كالقادرين. Then we go back to the uh, example. Much as you would say, intercourse is pleasurable like sweets. But sexual pleasure is totally unlike that of sweets, although they do share in the name. The name here is um, pleasure, ladha, ladith and ladha. Because there's nothing shared between uh, sugar and intercourse, but it's the word pleasure. This amounts to saying that when we know a God most high to be living, powerful, and knowing we are only knowing ourselves as we only know him by ways of ourselves for the deaf cannot conceivably understand the meaning of our saying that god hears nor can the blind understand the meaning of our saying that he sees
Therefore, when one asks how God, great and glorious, might be said to know things, we answer just as you know things. And if one asks, how might he be powerful? We answer as you are powerful. For a man cannot understand anything unless he has in him something corresponding to it. As you know things, I think this is, uh, there's a problem, not in translation now, but in the concept itself. If we answer, how does uh, God know things? And we say, as you know things, there's a big uh, difference. We know things. So we have... Uh, Our knowledge is, um, we might say, like post, uh, uh, post, post existence, like the thing comes into existence, and then we uh, know it. Not for uh, this, is absolutely not the knowledge of uh, uh, of God. God knows things before they exist he knows uh, every single thing for he created them and it cannot be the uh, there is a narrative at least the arabic translation of the old testament would give this effect that uh, uh, in in genesis at the very beginning when god uh, you know um, starts creating things uh, so he would create something and then he would see that it was beautiful i think that's a pro very problematic text in, in genesis but also here it's problematic to say like you know So he first knows what characterizes him and then knows something other than himself by energy with it. So if God had an attribute of or a specifying property, there were nothing in us corresponding to it or sharing its name. Even so much as this sweetness of sugar shares in the pleasure of intercourse, it would be inconceivable that we would ever understand the attribute or property at all. For each person only understands himself and then compares his own attributes with those of God, the Most High. And I think the translation now is uh, about the uh, sugar intercourse. It, again, it should be about the pleasure, about the word ladha, ladid and ladha, rather than. Uh, rather than about the word intercourse and the word sugar and it makes sense any uh, probably uh, neuroscientist would explain that there is a certain pleasure from uh, uh, taking uh, consuming uh, you know sugar other than the uh, taste itself Okay, so if God had an attribute or a, specific, or a specifying property and there were nothing in us corresponding to it or sharing its name, even so much as the sweetness of sugar shares in the pleasure of intercourse, it would be inconceivable that we would ever understand the attribute or property at all. For each person only understands himself and then compares his own attributes with those of God the Most High. Yet, his attributes are too exalted to be likened to ours. So this will be an inadequate knowledge in which imagining and resemblance are preponderant. So it needs to be complemented by the knowledge which denies any likeness and which rejects any grounds for commensurability 
even though the name be shared. The second path, which is described as closed, and the one that is closed consists in one's waiting to attain all the lordly, the divine, attributes to the point of becoming a lord, much as a boy waits until he matures to experience the pleasure of intercourse. Uh, and تحصل له صفات الربوبية حتى يصير ربا and it's about all the as is here translation وهذا السبيل مسدود ممتنع إذ يستحيل تحصل له تلك الحقيقة لغير الله تعالى. But this path is closed since it is impossible that this reality be attained by anyone other than God the Most High. There is no other way to authentic knowledge than this. Yet it is utterly closed except for God the Most High and Holy One. Yes, that's the closed, and now we understand at least. Inshallah, uh, we'll uh, begin with the same paragraph, the second way, and about the closed uh, path, the closed way, second way. Sabir al Masdud. Inshallah, we'll begin with that uh, tomorrow. Until then. بإذن الله عز وجل سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد أن لا أنت استغفرك وأتوب إليك السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته